I've seen them do it. I don't think I know. I, I, they can manifest from that dimension, spirit world, whatever you want to call it, to physical world where we can see them and they they touch, see, breathe, eat, smell. And I've been told they like the physical world the most. That's why they spend a lot of time in it. It's because when they're in the physical world, they can see, they can smell the flowers. They can taste the meat. They can touch the brook. When they're in spirit world, they don't get those senses. And now they go back and they can do that. I don't know how they do it, but they can go from that one dimension to the next. I've seen them do it. But what does that look like? Well, it's like like the orb and it just starts dissipating. And then as it does, you see a leg here and a leg here and it's poof, they're there. Wow. But oh, oh, wow, they can't keep the killing thing. Here's 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 what I've been told. Now, I don't know, I've never seen this. I've never ran upon a dead one. I've been mm -hmm. told that if like if you shoot one, that's why you hear about so many hundreds of stories, people shooting big guns and then not killing them. Yeah. Well, here's what I've been told. When they take a fatal blow, they go there, back to the spirit world. Oh. And it saves their body. Does it make sense, their physical body? So what do you think about, you just showed us a picture of something that I don't know if I should be saying that one there. Okay, this, uh, this is what I've been told on what happens. Like there's rare occasions, there are dead bodies. Okay. I can take you out to a big, Bigfoot grave site. Whenever y'all are here too, there's rocks, tombs, 20 foot long on a hillside. I but, can't wait. But when, when they, they're, they're, it's rare. It's very rare. Like that is legit real. I know it is the way it came out and the way it went back. It's rare. But what happens is I've been told they forget themselves. They here? Forget who, they, who they, no, them. Totally get it. they forget who they are and what they can do. That makes sense. You mean like, when they're here, they forget. Yeah. Physical. Oh, okay. Okay, they forget I understand what they really are, what they can really do. So they panic and they may not go back and they may panic and then they get caught and then um, they, they, they're dead. Yeah, that's what so, I'm told. So you don't, think, you don't think they come back and bury their dead? You think they're literally being. Um, yeah, I do. I do. The rare instances that they do, like forget themselves and die here, I think they bury them. Yes, absolutely. That makes so much sense about forgetting yourself because you know what? That's what we, we do every day. Yep. yep and yep. it just makes so much sense. It does. It does. It makes it, you know, I've taken bits and pieces of what I've seen, what I've experienced and what others I trust tell me. And I put wrapped it all up and that's my theories on things. And I think, I think they're pretty close to being right. I don't know. So far so good. I'm still here. You know, I've been, it's true. I've been, Five foot away, you know, from a dog man and look at me right in the eye at night one night, you know, a good moon. You can see silhouettes pretty good on the moon, good full moon. But I mean, that the first time that happened, <laughs> I hit my knees. I dropped. You, Did I don't, you? Yeah, you fight, flight, whatever you want to call it. I couldn't do nothing. I dropped to my knees. I probably. Paid yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I probably did because I don't, I'm telling you when something that powerful happens, because I looked and there, there, too, you know, what I mean? asked for, oh. so I wouldn't like, I walked up, like well, I went out and, and, and well, I, what I was taught, I tried for the first time, right? This is my first time trying. Mm -hmm. And I went out to this spot where there was a lot of dog men and a lot of Bigfoot and I tried it and it worked. And this wow. dude, it's a full moon, about 2 a.m. This dude stepped out in a clearing, like an old log and trail clearing. And he was like 70 yards from me, silhouette, plain as day. And it's like, I knew he was looking in my eyes and I, I was looking in his. I don't know how, because you couldn't see him, it was dark. He didn't self-illuminate either. He didn't self-illuminate his eyes, I don't know why. Mm -hmm. But it's like we connected and I said, to understand you better, I want to come closer. I want to see you better. And literal, he said, literally, he went, come forward. Wow. So I went, first time I connected, like me personally. So I said, okay. So as I was walking straight up to him, 
he stepped over to the wood line, that bend, and I lost track of him. So I thought he might have ran, ran him off, like most of the time it happens. Yeah. So I, I walked up to that spot thinking he's gone. And I, I'm looking around, I turned to look. He's not gone. He's squatted in a ditch with his elbows on his knees, squatted like a big chief. And he's down in the ditch and we're eye level. You know, I'm almost six foot tall. Wow. Head that, I mean, and I just went, poop. <laughs> but, you know, in all honesty, you know, we've always talked about how huge intent is and that's so much that's about it. your heart. Everything. It's everything. Mm -hmm. it's yeah. Everything. And that was the night, ladies, that I crossed that fear wall. I was telling you about where there's blessings waiting for you. That was it. That had to happen to me to be where I'm at. It had to. I'm glad it happened now because when I turned and looked at him and I dropped my knees, I started crying and I, I started praying. That's all I knew to do because I was a Baptist, raised a Baptist and started praying to God. please Lord. And uh, all of a sudden I just felt like, um, you know, when you're saved and baptized or whatever, I just felt that release feeling. I'm like, I can breathe. I took a deep breath and I turned back and looked at him. And I didn't feel fear no more. Weird. Weird. It's like I crossed the rainbow bridge, you know. Are you I, are you saying you didn't fear uh, yeah, Bigfoot yeah. anymore or or those anything. beings anymore? Or I anything so, in life? Not, uh, like not, anything not in life. Anything. I don't fear nothing. Yeah. I fear nothing but heights. But <laughs> now I'm gonna conquer that. The, I don't fear no man, no beast, no spirit. I I walk with love. I am good. I because when I turned and I went down and I opened up, I had the release. He, he done that. I know he did. He instilled that in me. I know he did. He just wanted to test me to see if I would take the plunge and walked. And I did. And when I turned and I turned to look back at him, like I was, you know how you get frozen and you can't turn your head, but you know, the right there kind of thing, like, you know, and I looked yeah. and, and I went, well, then I just turned my whole body and, and I know that's why that download thing I'm telling you about. I knew what he was feeling. He knew what I was feeling. And it was back and forth. And, and um, I thanked him. I thanked him when it was done. You know, I don't know, a minute later, two minutes later, sitting there staring at him. I said, thank you for that gift. Got up and walked back. So <clears throat> only because I'm super curious and I ask way too many questions. Um, was there connection when you saw him eye to eye like was there a moment when you literally saw each other like literally eye to eye like looking at each other well, i'll put it to you this way when i first called him out so to speak and he stepped out i wasn't connected him but i knew he was looking at me and i was looking at him right so when i walked up and went through all that and turned to him that's when the connection happened that, okay. that was Roger. That was my spirit teacher. That was him. That's okay. what that, that I'm talking about. That how, was, how often are you talking to him? Like, or how, how often is he coming in and talking to you? I probably talk to him daily. I pray every night. Wow. I talk to him. But him, me, it's rare. It really is. It's not okay. every day. It's not every week. Sometimes it months, you know, but. I know when he does, it's something important and I'll listen kind of thing, you know, mm -hmm. that's the best way I can put it. It's, it's crazy, but you know what? I don't care what anybody, I'm going with it because I have experienced stuff. Most humans will never, ever, ever experience in their life. I'm so blessed that I got, that I'm open enough, minded enough to, to step through that wall. And I'm, in, I'm there now. I don't, I, I, I've been in some pretty, uh, I don't know if you call them spooky, but I've been in some spots. I don't fear nothing. I don't fear no wildlife. I don't fear them. I don't, I'm don't. i good. I'm good. It's the way I walk. It's, you, you learn to walk that way, you know? So yeah. I don't well, fear. After, after my NDE, that's actually what happened to me. And so I, I'm, I'm understanding what you're feeling as far as that no fear thing. Um, well, I had to learn to walk and talk again, the whole works. And after that, it was the worst thing that possibly could happen happened. I mean, I died. I'm back, <laughs> you know? So what else right. is there to fear really? Right. And I, and I yeah. quit walking into a room thinking, Oh, do I look okay? Instead, I walk. In the room. <laughs> you know, That's so it. 
you do. You have so much more confidence when you're not bombarded by all of those worries and concerns about yourself and those fears and those anxieties. When those go away, it's amazing. Granted, a lot of times, you know, people do have problems with them seeping back, but all you got to do is, is take another step to where you found them ultimately. You know what I mean? You want to hear something really crazy? This is that crazy, crazy story I'm getting ready to lay on you guys. Yes, please. And this happened. So help me God. When I did the coast show, I got bombarded with messenger messages on Facebook because I don't give out my phone number or nothing. So I'm answering them one by one. And these people are scared. I've had encounters and. And they said, you know, you're so refreshing. You have a wholly different outlook on this. And I really enjoyed what you said. And I, I was I was healing. That's healing. I was healing those people to get over their trauma. And I'm doing this. And I get this one message. And I can tell it's somebody that knows stuff like I do, the way they structure their, quite, their statements. So I'm like, look, I'm going to be down for the night. Would you know, call me, please. I gave her my number. She called. It was a shaman from uh, the Creek Nation. I only knew that after all this, what I'm going to tell y'all took place. Now, you got to remember, my mom's been passed for six, eight years at that time. I'm driving down the road two weeks earlier. And during that time is when I really went through a lot of enlightenment. A lot of knowledge was downloaded. I was walking, we walked through truck stops and I, and I walk on the, tile floor and it would buckle and about bounce me off the distortions i was really i was right in that veil back and forth and i was told those are distortions because i'm so close and truckers looking at me crazy a lot of crazy shit happening to me close to what the veil the that realm the other realm like i was you know it's like i think they see a, a light it's like mall straw to the light when you're close to it and that's when you can interact with them I'm I'm new at all this stuff, so I'm going through this. I'm like, whoa, and I, you know, I'm like, well, that, you're close. You're the more distortions. And you're close. You're close to the veil. You're right there. You know, you're you're vibrating up here. You know, I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So I'm driving down the road working. My iPhone right here rings. Braden, that's my oldest son here. He's seventeen. Okay, it's ten o three a.m. He's supposed to be in school. Mommy's up in Louisville working. I'm on the road. So I got to answer it. Maybe something important. So I go to hit the button, slide it. It won't let me. My phone's locked up, but it's still ringing. Wait, what the hell? So I pull it off, hang, you know, and then finally the, the call goes, it ends. Don't go to board. So I text Brady back, say, hey, what's up? Question mark. Click. And I'm working. I'm driving. And it rings again. And I'm trying it, and it will not let me answer. So finally, when it rings through, I go to call him. Then he's calling me back. But we can't never. I'm like, yeah, evidently, if it's like emergency, you know, school call 911 or he'll get on his mom, it must not be a big deal because he ain't texting me back. That was two weeks before I had this conversation at the truck stop with this, this person, the shaman. We're talking. She starts telling me things nobody else knows. People coming through to her, coming to me. My my grandfather, uh, she told me what he looked like, had a white shirt on. I've got one picture of him in a white t-shirt. Stuff she shouldn't know. And I'm like, well, why did you get a hold of me? She said, I was driving home from work and I was listening to you on satellite radio and I turned my truck off and I go to walk in the front door of my house and there's a Bigfoot and a dog man standing there. And they tell me, you need to go back to the truck and listen to him. I'm like, huh, okay. She said, so I went back and listened to the rest of you. And you know, I, was, I was told to contact you and talk to you. And she said, oh, by the way, that call you got two weeks ago was your mother. And I went, what? That call you got two weeks ago was your mother. And I'm like, uh, what'd she want? She wanted to know if you was listening yet. I said, huh. And I was still, I'm like, uh, she's like, oh, she's giggling right now. She wants me to tell you, you knew she never was good at that technology stuff. And that's exactly what my mom would say. And then I'm all in then. And I'm like, I got chills. I'm like, wow. You know, so... 
that happened. So, and then I asked some people and they said, yes, they can call you on physical devices from the other side. I said, can I have a physical conversation with them? That has happened before. Tell me that ain't some craziness. My mom actually got a phone call from her mother who had passed away the, the day or two prior and she got so scared. And when, when she got the call, she, really? she said, yep. Her mom said, honey, don't be scared or don't, don't hang up. And my mom was so scared because it was her mother who had just literally passed away. And she quick hung up, hung up the phone and the, in oh. the television that was, you know, in the stand, there was like this little like white silvery thing that just went vroom, right through the television, right in the middle of it. It's wow. amazing. I totally agree. I that that helps me understand it. See, I didn't, I thought, I didn't know if this happened to other people. But there we go. Wow. Yeah. Well, well and it, not only, but not only that, I mean, they are, they, okay. So that we can pretty much prove that there's a phone call, right? But mm -hmm. we can't prove what we are receiving in our minds. But that reminds me of how we're receiving information from people who have passed, you know, well, to get messages. It, well, Braden called me when he got out of school. Dad, what would you want? I said, what would you want? You called me. He said, no, I didn't. My phone was locked in my room. Mom wouldn't let me take to school because I don't have a protector on it yet. So that phone he, that she called me on was locked in Braden's room in his dresser drawers. She used well, that to get a hold of me. Isn't wow. That? Okay. So there is nothing. I mean, there's no specific cellular devices that these spirits are calling us on because it does happen on landlines. That's that's actually the phone that my mom. See, and that, that's, that's, information. A landline. that's good because, I mean, are we recording right now? Oh, we are. Okay. Yeah. I'll tell you all something. We're not recording. That's kind of top secret. But that's, that's something that I'm getting ready to go down the rabbit hole in is... It's, I'm telling you, it's vibrations, frequencies. Um, that's, that's where the, the answers lie. Uh, I'm, I'm convinced. And if you can, you know, I heard some stories about doctors years ago was killing cancer cells with a certain frequency they put on the tumor. Did y'all hear about that? I heard about that a long time ago. And it went away. The government, the big pharma squashed that, didn't they? Because yeah. they wouldn't make no money then. So I really believe that. I believe that could be true and legit. I really do. Knowing what I know now about this stuff, you know, and it's it's wild, but it's real. I'm telling you, it's real. I'm telling you the Egyptians had it. And the, you know, and I'm going to tell you all something else. I think the Egyptians was spot on right. <clears throat> Anubis, dog man, gatekeepers of the underworld, God of the underworld. I really believe that now knowing what I know and knowing who I know. You know, I've never came out and asked, but I just, you just kind of, you know how you just know oh. things because I'm telling you, the Egyptians smelted their gold out of them things, you know, and they uh, held them to a high esteem of their tombs. And I really believe we have more lives. We go from this life to the next. And there's got to be, we just don't pop out another human. Boop, boop. There's got to be a void there somewhere. Time's relevant. You got you to keep that in mind. Microsecond could be 10 years. Time's relevant. But there is a void there from this life form to this one. These are Earth skins, the way I look at our bodies, Earth, our astronaut suits. Yes. What yes, our suitcases. Us, that's it. What makes us us is right in here. Mm -hmm. It's that heart. The, but, and I believe that void, I believe they do. I believe that's their, their model, their job is to escort this, the, our souls from this to this one through that void, that darkness. After we're done with this conversation, I'd love to tell you about what I've seen on the other side. When I did pass, I I, I can't wait to talk to you about it because I think you'd really be interested so in it. So it was but... more than a bright white light? Oh, oh yeah, everything's really vivid too. I still remember, I wrote down I gotta everything. hear this. Oh yeah, it's incredible. Well, we'll talk about that later, sorry. Yeah, I gotta hear that, yeah. Oh. I mean, you know, and th these are just my opinions. They're not, you know, uh, but I just, what have I experienced? And uh, I'm not, you know, I'm not no genius, but I ain't no dummy. And I'm pretty creative kind of guy. And I can, I can take, and I'm really good with people. I love people. I love humanity. That's why I love talk, love people. Me, I, I'll meet a stranger and talk to them, get to know them. I want to know about them kind of yeah. guy. I am. I love people. But I've just taken all this and just wrapped it right here. And that's my beliefs, and that's what I, the way I walk. And like I said, I bet about 90%. I've taken probably 
somewhere around 10 to 15. I don't keep count because that's not relevant to me, but 10 to 15 people, a lot of them newbies, first timers, and they got the full money. I mean, everything, chatter, uh, eye shine, orbs, walking, whispering in the ear kind of stuff. They got it all. And it's, you know, it's just, like I said, you got to get, you know, 110% what I'm telling you. And then they do it. They know me, they trust me, and they do it. And magic happens. So it's changed their lives. It truly changed their lives. One guy was an atheist. <laughs> really? What happened after now. that? Oh, and he's, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's, it literally, it, when you experience this stuff, it changes your, it changes your life. It does. Mm-hmm. That's, all, yeah. That's awesome. I've so enjoyed your conversation. <sighs> oh, I do too. And I know that you said you had to get up early, so I don't want to keep yeah. you forever tonight. But can yeah. we schedule another time for you to come on the show? Because before I logged out of the sure. chat room, people were going crazy about how they could listen to you for hours and they wanted you to come oh, back. Really? So, yes. <laughs> Well, <laughs> there were no questions I, you know, just have him back on <laughs> it's true and then when i know it's and then i get excited about this stuff sharing it because it's so surreal so it, i mean but it's real it's real it's all i can say mm-hmm. you know but i get i get i get excited about it i mean <laughs> it's just the well, way I, get it. I know it's soon but would you be available next week on wednesday let me look here um let me check my calendar. No. <laughs> yeah, let me pencil you in, darling. Let me pencil you in. <laughs> I should, you know, looking at everything, I should. Yeah. Um, what's that? Okay, I'm going to be back in Tuesday. So, yeah. Um, let's see. What's. So, yeah, I should. I should. Okay. Uh, yeah, I should be able to. Because yeah. I know that the, I know you've got so many more stories to share, and then the listeners were excited to hear those stories. So that's the sixteenth, right? Yeah. That's my okay. I love y'all's names. See, she squatchers. Hey. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You said it. Some people can't see it. She, <laughs> she squatchers. That's yeah, right. think about it before you pronounce. It's one of those Peter picked a pack of pickled peppers. Uh, that's pickled. right. Oh, awesome. So y'all all from North Dakota, all you girls? I am from Minnesota. Minnesota. Sammy just moved. Sammy just moved from Minnesota to Virginia. And I wasn't from Minnesota before I was a transplant. <laughs> well, part of Virginia. I've been I'm through there Virginia a lot. Beach. Really? Yeah. I've, I've stayed the night there before. On a, I used on to live here when I was a kid. Yeah, I went down to the Naval Air Station to that little pull-off where they land and took a bunch of videos one time. I've yeah. been there. My dad was in the Navy there. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. My my uncle was a tech rep on the FA-18. So, yeah, yeah, it's a pretty cool plane. I love it. Yeah, I love jets. I was Air Force ROTC, got my allocation, and I saw what I was wanting to do, fly for the Air Force like my dad. And then a woman happened in my life, and I gave it up for her. What? Two weeks Wait later, a minute. <laughs> two weeks later, it's just like officer and gentleman shit. I'm telling you, two weeks later, she moved out on me. And I about committed suicide over that shit because oh that God. was hard. That was hard to get, you know, and the Air Force is really competitive. And that was since 1990. I'll work my ass off. There's 23 applicants, two of us got allocations. I got one and I get it. And I'm getting ready to ship off leadership camp, sign the contract, six year contract, you know. And I'm like, no, I'm going to I'm going to stay here for her. And we had a baby boy and all that. Two weeks later, she's gone. I'm like. And you didn't, you couldn't go you back. Know, once you say no, uh, uh, there ain't no going back. Yeah. <sighs> but you know what? That was, it led you to where you are today. It was meant to and be. I, I know it was. We've all had to go through such H-E Crap. double hockey sticks. Yeah. yeah. In life, yeah. It, life is hard, but it can be so beautiful. It's just seeing it and opening your eyes to the beauty. I That's think. it. I, I've learned to trust it all now. You know, if something bad happens, I'm like, I know that happened for a reason. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like I the just single say, I just say, is that all my karma points? Are we are we balanced again? Can we knock this <laughs> off now? <laughs> right, right. No, I hear you. I hear you. Y'all are like right in line with y'all. Are like, because there's you know, like I said, there's like there's there's all these groups fighting. I'm right. No, I'm right. And woo, it's y'all are crazy and this and and um, you know, I I once believed that this maybe was a descendant of Gigantopithecus Blackie. I once believed that. I didn't know, you know, 
but I never, I was always open-minded enough to keep all possibilities, you know, available. I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't set on something and say that's the way it is. But a lot of people do, man. It's a shame too, because there could be so much information shared. We could be so much further along. Yes. Well, well here's how I think of it. Sorry. I think of it as a giant, the great mystery is a giant puzzle that somebody threw away the box. You don't know what the picture is supposed to look like. So when you receive yeah. some information, when somebody shared information with you and it doesn't make sense to you, you can't see how that could possibly be true. Yeah. You don't know if that fits in the puzzle puzzle or not because you have no idea. So you That's should it. take the information. If, if it doesn't feel like you know where to put it right now, then just put it in your mystery bag with all your other puzzle pieces that you don't know where they fit yet, or even if they do belong in the puzzle, and mm -hmm. just put it in there. You don't have to reject it. You don't have to fully accept mm -hmm. it either, but take the information. That's and a good attitude to have, yeah. And, right. and at some point, and I've had this happen over the years that I've been doing that, at some point I'm like, hey, I get that now. I have heard her say <laughs> that. She's literally been driving and went, Oh my gosh, I just found the, what the piece of the puzzle was. And I was like, what, what? And yeah, so then she started explaining it. I was like, oh, it's guys, really cool. Have you guys ever went to sleep at night, woke up next morning and just, just know you no more? Like they downloaded something overnight, do you? Yeah. Have y'all ever experienced I've that? I've woken up with that alien in bed next to me. And I, I woke that. up like 30 seconds before my alarm went off and saw this being get out of the bed and walk out of my room. I wasn't dreaming, so. Wow. Well, I, no, I totally believe that. I'm going to tell you what happened to me. Before I had the face-to-face -face with Roger, about a month or two before that, I'm laying in bed. I get woke up 2 a.m. Um, I look, foot of my bed's a big, dark, evil figure, right? on, You know, a dark figure. And I'm paralyzed. The sheet, and I'm strong. I can't budge. And I'm just, and, and, and all of a sudden, I go to sleep. That was weird. The hell? The very next night, same time, I wake up, I smell smoke like the house is on fire. And I'm getting ready to jump out of bed and go grab kids, wake people up. And then, no, just lay down, you're fine, just relax. And I go back to sleep. And then I have that face-to-face, -face and I get it, I understand it. Roger came to me. He showed me what the... The, the light feels like the smudging and the sweet sage and the smoke and the relaxation. And then he showed me what that dark figure feels like that you don't understand. The, the fear and the, oh, it looks evil and you're, you're frightened, paralyzed. And so he gave me both realms to prepare me for that. I know that now. He came wow. to me and done that in my bedroom, in my bedroom. So I believe, I believe you, girl. Can I'm you? Can you please do me a favor, do all of us a favor? Do you think if you would introduce, like mention that you're going to be bringing some chicks to come say hello? <laughs> Call the cheese budget. <laughs> Look at that, prepared. <laughs> yeah, get them prepared because we're coming. Yeah, they're I listening promise. right now. They know when I'm talking. They, it's like once you're connected, you're always connected. It's weird. They can like jump in anytime and like eavesdrop. They can. They know what I can put to you this way. If y'all do come. Before you come, they'll know you're coming. Oh, yeah. It's like it's already written. Yeah, spirits do that, that too. Spirits know when you're coming. Yeah, they just know. They know. Like, people like, can you give them this? I said, they already know. Don't worry. They already know. Because I believe it's already written. Like, if y'all come, we go out. It was already written. They knew that probably centuries. I don't know. Time's relevant. I don't know what time, how long ago, but they know. I don't know how they know, but they know. It's weird. It is incredible, but I, I know you have to go. I know you have to go, but um, I just wanted to thank you so much, and I cannot wait until next week. But, yes, definitely yeah. say hi to them from us because yeah, will. we will I, be there. <laughs> I need to get outside and see those lights in the sky. Yes, take pictures, please. Aurora oh, Borealis. Oh, is that where the, the planets are alive? No, well, the, the, the Aurora the Borealis. Sun, the sun put out a whole bunch of extra energy and it's hitting our atmosphere. And we, oh, I'm in the nor a north enough area that can see the northern lights dancing. Yes, you are up there. Yeah. yeah. yeah I'm, I need in to get north Dakota. I'm in South Dakota. I'm you in know. Minnesota. You're in Minnesota. Okay. Yeah. Yep. In there. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Take a yeah, video, are... Jen, not pictures. Video so we can see it go. There you go, Tommy. Yes. Cool. Yes. That'd All be right. Awesome. So. Yeah, I'm thinking if I can't see it outside, maybe I should drive out to, out of town a little bit. Um, so if yep. I don't get the video uploaded tonight right away, then you know why. 
Okay. I am so close to saying I want to come with you, Jen, but it's way too late. Jason would kill me. <laughs> I really want to go. Uh, oh, well. You got to drive away <laughs> from the, the car. You get rid of that light, away from that light pollution, don't you, Jen? Yeah. To see them good? Yeah. Yeah. You know how they, you know how they uh, found light pollution? How they oh. came upon it? Sea turtles. They hatch. Yeah. Sea turtles. They hatch on the beach. And they, they're drawn to the beach to a certain spot by the moonlight. And what was happening, I think it had happened out in L.A. area. The light pollution in the city, the sea turtles thought it was the moon, was going there. And there wasn't no place to lay their eggs. Oh. Yeah, it's kind of, and the scientists started figuring out, well, they thought it was the moon. So now that's where the light pollution stuff come from. Yeah. That is cool. definitely wow. something I didn't know. Cool. Yeah. Hey, um, Tammy. Yes. Um, message me any ma questions you got on that patent stuff. I know a lot about it. I've got a utility patent. I've got a design patent. And I've got a PTO patent tr uh, trade uh, uh, com uh, treaty um, patent. They're very expensive wall hangers. <laughs> oh, no. I've right. always wondered about well, that. I'm, I'm just being real. I've probably gonna... got 60000 in both of them. And they're really good patents. One's ran out now, and it'll be, you'll probably see Ford or Chevy or somebody will grab it. But it's, mm -hmm. uh, unless they call it the Valley of Death, you'll get uh, friends and family to help you invest in the patent, and you'll have a patent. You'll have intellectual property. Yay. But then you start down the Valley of Death, prototyping, sales, manufacturing. And then you're going to get down here at about a million dollars investment. And then you got to get back up to, to get it on the market. Like Walmart, they won't even talk to you unless you can supply all their distribution centers and like like stringent, and they will nail your ass if you don't like. It's craziness, but get you if you got a if you got someone money, a big investor that's going to back you, go for it, girl. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna sign off of this after show recording, uh, and Bye. so we we've, we've locked Parker into being on our show next week, so. Everybody will have to tune in for that for more awesome stories. Oh, we're still on the show right now. Yeah, we are. Oh, <laughs> we're, we're, we're not on the show. We're just recording. We're, so doing we're not on the radio. Record. That's why I said oh, so I record can edit, like, edit the patent stuff out. Sorry. <laughs> no, that, I mean. I it's okay. We didn't give away any information. So no, we good. Uh, gave someone else some good information. There you, know? you go. I just hope no one contacts you about patents now. So don't contact me. It's in oh, no, I'll, I'll show you what. Here you go. And I'm not telling y'all what I'm patenting, so. Oh, That's one you. of mine. There you go. Wow. Do you see it? Yep. It's, yeah. See that? Tailgate seat, 17 planes that had 20 before uh, the Ford engineer beat me in patent office. But, oh. Hey, it's all good. Life. The guy, the, the guy Lessons that, learned in life. Well, the guy that squealed on me has got a lot of money and lives in Manhattan right now. So I think I'm. There you go. All right. I'm going to stop recording. Right. Okay. Bye, everybody. Peace.